Hi everyone, this is Josh with the AJ Mirwald bringing you another episode of Science and Sailing. Today, we're going to be introducing a new mini-series about water chemistry. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of the composition and interaction of different substances that make up matter. When we are studying water chemistry, we are generally looking at the concentration of different chemicals within the water. So, do you think that water is healthier with more chemicals or less chemicals in it? This is a trick question. Chemicals make up literally everything. Water itself is H2O, which is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And it itself is a chemical. Oxygen, in its usable form, O2, is a crucial component for life, both in the water and on land, and is also a chemical. On the other hand, nitrate, or NO3, is crucial to life, but if the quantities are too high, becomes toxic. So, when we are measuring the concentration of different chemicals in the water, we have a range of acceptable values that healthy water falls within. And the parameters can be different depending on which uh, body of water we're looking at as well. For example, if we're measuring uh, the salt concentration, um, another chemical, we will have different values for the water in an inland pond versus the beach at Cape May. If the inland pond had a high salt value, we might suspect that there's a problem. Salt, by the way, is called salinity. Um, likewise, if we tested ocean water and found a low salt concentration, there may be a problem here as well. So, how do we know which values are healthy and which values are not? Can we take just one reading from a body of water and determine if those numbers are good? Not really. What we need to look for is changes in chemical concentrations over time, often over many years. For example, if we measure the phosphate levels in the Delaware River, phosphate, and found the value of about 0.1 parts per million, how do we determine if that's a healthy level? Um, we can look for indicators in the environment, such as the amount of plants and animals, or the concentration of other chemicals, or even the presence of factories, farms, or other pollutants. But it won't be until we measure the phosphate for about a month or even years later and reassess the indicators that we will know if the health of the water is being affected by this chemical. If you measure the phosphate later and find it to be maybe around 25 parts per million, so right up around this 30 parts in this chart, and then measure significantly less fish, more algae, and see that there is a new factory dumping waste in the river right down the way, you may begin to form an idea of a chemical's toxicity. So, knowing all of this, how do we actually measure the chemical concentrations in the water? Well, we use a variety of different test methods depending on the chemical that we want to test. In future videos, we're going to explore some of these chemicals and their effects on aquatic ecosystems. Do you know of any chemicals that get tested in the water? Do you know how we test them? Let us know in the comment section below. This has been Josh with the AJ Mirwald bringing the Bayshore to you.